So here I'd like to talk about uh, what a shift register is. Uh, first of all, shift registers come in two types. There's shift right and shift left. Um, and when you have a shift right shift register, uh, the contents are going to shift from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. And external data on an input, which um, in Mealy's book we label as DL underscore in, uh, it will come into the most significant bit of the shift register and then when you have a shift left shift register well it's just now uh, the content shift the other way they go from least significant bit to most significant bit and you have an input typically labeled dr underscore in and that data comes into the least significant bit so this shifting occurs okay the movement of the bits occurs at the time of a clock transition so just like with memory registers, you can either have rising edge or falling edge. Uh, same thing with shift registers, because shift registers are made with uh, D flip-flops, just like memory registers are. It's just that the flip-flops are connected in a different way uh, to get the shifting of the bits. So just like you can have a memory register that's either rising edge triggered or falling edge triggered, uh, same thing with shift registers, whether they're shift right or shift left. Uh, they can either be rising edge triggered or falling edge triggered. So here's a couple of examples just to illustrate the difference between shift right and shift left. So uh, this rectangle with the squares, this is just shorthand notation for all the flip-flops that make up uh, a register. So you can think of each of these squares inside the rectangle as being the output of one of the D flip-flops that makes up uh, the shift register. And since we have eight squares in this rectangle, uh, this is representing a shift register with eight uh, D flip-flops. Okay, so it's an eight-bit shift register. So let's say initially uh, we have these contents right here, these bits. So the most significant bit, as you can see, is one. And then we have 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, where 0 here, that's the least significant bit uh, contained within the shift register. So this is our initial condition. And since we're shifting right, uh, it's the DL input, uh, external input, that matters. Okay, and let's say it's set to 0. Well, at the time of the rising edge, since this is a rising edge a shift register, at the time of that 0 to 1 transition of the clock, that's when the shifting occurs. So right at this time of this transition, this data on DLN, it's going to come into the most significant bit of the shift register. And then all the bits that are contained within the shift register to begin with, they're all going to shift one place over shifting from the most significant bit to the least significant bit. So this zero comes in from the DLN external input, and then this bit moves one place over, this place, this bit moves one place over, this bit one over, just like that. And then this zero, uh, the bit in the least significant bit, well, it's not retained. There's not uh, any place for it to go. So the new t contents of the shift register would be what you see here. So as you know, we can represent um, binary as a hexadecimal, and we can easily convert binary to hexadecimal by uh, grouping in four bits, uh, four bit grouping starting with the least significant bit, right? So see our initial contents uh, in hex would be, let's see, this 4-bit grouping would give us 2, and this 4-bit grouping, that's 11 in binary, which is B in hex. So you see the content started out B2 hex, and then after the shift, let's see here, we have a 9, and here we have a 5. Okay, so instead of... Um, uh, saying the contents in binary, we could say, well, before the shift occurred, we had contents B2 hex, and after the shift occurred, we have contents F9 hex. Okay, so that's a shift right. Uh, here's a shift left example. 
where now um, the DR in external input matters okay when you're shifting left and as I said earlier when you shift left the bits are now going to shift from least significant to most significant and this data on the DR in uh, external input it's going to come into the least significant bit so here's our initial contents and at the time of the uh, clock bolts or the clock edge the 0 to 1 transition uh, this one comes into the least significant bit and all the other bits are going to go one place over towards the most significant like this right and then this one here there's no place for it to go so that's uh, no longer uh, contained within the register so this would be our new contents here and again you could describe the contents as hex quantities right here this would be uh, a 6 in hex and this 4 bit grouping here let's see that's 12 in binary that would be C so the initial contents here in hex was C6 and then after the shift left occurs let's see here we have this 4 bit groupings in 8 and this 4 bit grouping let's see that would be 13 which is a D in hex okay so here we started with a C6 in hex in the contents initially and after the shift left occurs now we have contents 8D uh, in hex now there's um, a device called a universal shift register and a universal shift register, in addition to being able to shift both uh, left and right, it also uh, has a couple other functions where you can load it just like you would load a memory register. And also um, it has a hold state. So if you look here, we've got our uh, D output. And this is an 8-bit universal shift register. We have an 8-bit uh, D load. We have a select line of 2 bits, and that's because there's four functions so um, in Dr. Mealy's book uh, his universal shift register when the select lines okay so this is like S0 S1 okay our select lines which um, again two bits over here so in Dr. Mealy's book uh, his universal shift register when both these select lines are zero that's when it's in the storage state so it will hold previous data uh, when the select lines are one that's when it's going to do a load and you'll see the load for universal shift register it's just like loading a memory register that we talked about earlier um, when the select lines are a binary two a one zero that's when uh, we'll have a shift right and when the select lines are both one, that's the shift left. And in the intro to um, the lab six this week, uh, in that intro, I show you the Verilog code that models a universal shift register like this. So just to uh, review how uh, loading works, uh, let's say that this is the data that's on this 8-bit uh, input right here and we want to load that into the uh, universal shift register well when you're loading it doesn't matter what the initial contents of the shift register are it could be anything okay so I'm going to put dashes here to represent that there could be any data here and once the clock transition occurs okay whether it's rising edge or falling edge depending on what kind of um, triggering you have for your shift register at the time of that clock transition all these bits are going to come in uh, to the shift register so you know this is my most significant bit right, and this is my least significant bit and here's the most significant bit of the register and here's the least significant bit of the register well right at the time of that clock transition this data comes in and replaces whatever was there Okay, so again, that's why I'm putting the dashes here because it doesn't matter what was there initially. Uh, when you load, whatever you're loading, it just replaces what was previously uh, in the register.
So that's what a load is referred to, and sometimes it's called parallel load. Parallel meaning that all the bits come in at once. All right, so here is an example uh, using a timing diagram with a universal shift register uh, from Dr. Milley's book. So let's just go through this example just to see, uh, you know, again, to get some practice with this new device and also more practice with the timing diagram. So you can see here, like we talked about earlier, uh, based on the select inputs, it's going to determine the function, whether we're going to hold, load, shift right or shift left. Um, all the operations, that you c as you can see here, are rising edge. So this is a rising edge triggered shift register. Um, we haven't been talking anything about propagation delays yet, so uh, we will um, right towards the end of the uh, course. And let's see, initially we're told that the D out is hex 45. So I went ahead and wrote that in that. That's our initial value for uh, out. So let's see what happens to the contents of the shift register. The contents start out as 45 hex, but let's see what happens as time progresses on here. So you can see I've got marked out the rising edge um, of the clocks because that's what matters, right? This is a rising edge triggered shift register. So at the time of this first rising edge, our select line is a 1, so that means a parallel load is going to happen. So right at that time, the data that's on the D load input, which this is hard to see, but this is a B3 uh, hex. That's going to get loaded in. Okay, so B3 hex gets loaded in at this time. And that's going to be the contents of the register until the next clock pulse, okay, the next rising edge occurs. And at the time of this uh, rising edge, our select line is a 2, okay, a binary 2, which means we're going to do a shift right. And when we shift right, the DL input, that's our external input, uh, is equal to a 1. So if we take this B3 that's in hex and write it as a binary, it would be 1, 0, 1, 1, that's B right 11 and then 3 would be 0 0 1 1 and we're doing a shift right so that means the data is going to shift from most significant bit to least significant bit and a 1 is coming in from the external input so uh, we'll have a 1 that comes in and then all these bits uh, we'll shift over, but we'll lose this uh, least significant one here. So I'm just going to now rewrite this, but again, in that last one, again, there's no place for it to go. So it essentially uh, falls off the face of the earth, so to speak. So after the uh, shift right occurs, we're going to have this here. Okay, where in hex one one zero one that's a D and one zero zero one that's nine. So before the shift right we have hex B three. Uh, after the shift right occurs we have hex D nine. Okay, the next rising edge um, our select lines that's a three. So now we're doing uh, a shift left and we're looking at the DR in external input right here which is equal to a 1 so now when we do a shift left it, the one's going to come into the least significant bit and all the other bits go uh, from least significant bit to most significant bit they shift in that direction so this one here will um, essentially fall off the face of the earth and actually we're going to end up back with the same as what we started with after we uh, load, loaded the register with V3, right? Because since we shifted right putting a 1 in and now we're shifting left putting a 1 back because we had lost a 1 earlier here, we just end up with the same 
the same data um, that we had loaded. So essentially these two, um, you know, the shift right and the shift left in this particular case, they effectively canceled out there. I mean, that's not always true. It's just a coincidence for this particular set of values in this example. Okay, so now, um, let's see, this clock edge here, we're at this point. Now that's a uh, select line of one, which is a parallel load. So at this time, we're going to load in what's at the deload input, which is this um, hex 7a. Okay, um, then this clock edge right here, uh, this is the select line is zero, so the, uh, when the select line is zero for this shift register, um, it's going to hold. So it just holds the data. Okay, so storage happens right here. We just retain the same data we had before that clock edge, the uh, 7a hex. And then the last thing that happens here, let's see, on this clock edge, we have another uh, shift right where the DL in, let's see, it's kind of close, but that is a one at that point. So let's see, 7A in binary, let's see, a seven would be this four bit group, and then A would be this four bit group. So let's see, we're shifting, um, let's see, select two. So we're shifting right again. So when we're shifting right, uh, the data goes from most significant bit to least significant bit. So a one is coming in. So this one comes in. And then everything else shifts uh, from most significant to least significant. So we're going to lose this zero right here. So we're going to end up with... We're going to end up with this. And let's see, this as a hex, this is going to be 11, which is B in hex, and this is 13, which is D in hex. Right? So the data we end up after uh, we go through this timing diagram here is that the final contents of the shift register will be uh, hex BD.